good afternoon students now this is a short note on tympanic membrane the question is write a short note on tympanic membrane the answer you may begin like this now the tympanic membrane is a thin translucent partition between the external acoustic meatus and the middle ear cavity so it is a very thin translucent partition between the external acoustic meatus and the middle ear cavity now the shape of this uh, tympanic membrane is oval and it measure hardly about 1 cm on either side that though it is oval it may be 9 Uh, millimeter by the 10 millimeters in the various dimensions okay now this tympanic membrane is obliquely placed thus it faces downward forward and laterally that is from its external surface the surface which is facing towards the external acoustic meatus here it is faces downwards forwards and laterally let me tell you or show you this membrane between the external acoustic meatus and that of the middle ear cavity again see this from the diagram of the dissector authored by me this is the external acoustic i mean say the auricle uh, or external ear and this tunnel is the external acoustic meatus and then this is small area here is the middle ear cavity okay this is the middle ear which anteriorly continues with the auditory tube or the pharyngo tympanic tube now you can see a partition thin fibrous membrane between the external acoustic meatus and this middle ear cavity and see this membrane which is shown here in cream color is obliquely placed and from its external surface means the surface which is facing towards the external acoustic meatus is directed downwards and laterally okay it is directed downwards and laterally now in this other diagram also you can see the similar thing this is the external acoustic meatus and this is the middle ear cavity where three ossicles are seen of the middle ear cavity it is the head head of the malleus this is the incus and this is small bone here is the stapes so stapes incus and malleus they are present in the middle ear cavity out of which the handle of the malleus is attached to the upper half of the tympanic membrane and you can see that this tympanic membrane on its external surface the surface which is facing towards external auditory meatus is concave while the surface which is facing towards the middle ear cavity is the convex so this is concave surface externally and convex surface okay internally okay it is internally so this must have given you a idea about the position of the tympanic membrane between external acoustic meatus and that of the middle ear cavity let's come to the structure of the tympanic membrane which is a thin membranous structure it consists of three layers the outer surface is covered by the thin layer of skin outer surface means the surface which is facing towards the external acoustic or auditory meatus it is covered by thin layer of skin while the middle is a fibrous layer made up of the superficial okay radiating fibers and deep circular fibers i will tell you about the uh, radiating and circular fibers okay by which this middle fibrous layer is made okay middle fibrous and the inner layer is made up of the mucous membrane or mucosa and it is made up of or it is formed by the low ciliated columnar epithelium so these are three layer outer is thin skin middle is fibrous layer and inner is the mucous layer which is made up of the low ciliated columnar epithelium okay let us see this hmm? 
okay this surface okay here i have drawn this tympanic membrane this is the external i mean say auricle ear okay this is the external acoustic meatus here it is lined by the skin and the same skin becomes continuous on this tympanic membrane which is concave towards the auricle and it is convex towards the middle ear cavity and here it is the outer cutaneous layer the green color is the middle layer or the fibrous layer in which the handle of the malleus is embedded within the fibrous layer and the inner layer of this tympanic membrane is made up of the mucous membrane or mucosa which is formed by the low ciliated columnar epithelium this is more better seen in this where this is the tympanic membrane it is its outer surface which is concave towards the auricle and it is convex towards the middle ear cavity and these are the three layers okay the outer is the cuticle layer or the thin layer of the skin middle is the fibrous layer and inner is the epithelial layer okay which also covers the whole of the cavity of the middle ear that means nothing is inside this mucous membrane cavity only air is there all the structures incus malleus and stapes nerves blood vessels they lie deep to this mucous membrane okay or epithelial lining so epithelial i am mean, say middle ear contains okay within this mucosa is nothing but the air hmm? all other structures they are outside in the middle anyway this is our the tympanic membrane convex inside and concave outside okay outside so this is the structure of the tympanic membrane now the outer middle and the inner layer outer middle and the inner layer are derived from the ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm respectively these are the three germinal layer of the developing embryo okay this is skin is derived from the ectoderm that is fibrous layer is derived from that of the mesoderm that is the embryonic mesoderm and this inner layer is derived from the endoderm so these three layers of embryo ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm are represented here in the form of the three layers of the tympanic membrane okay tympanic membrane okay let us come to the features of this tympanic membrane now the outer surface which is facing towards the external auditory meatus is concave while the inner surface is convex which i have already shown you the inner surface provides attachment to the handle of the malleus which extend from its uh, center okay upward it extend from its center upward in this diagram even you can see here that this is the handle of the malleus and this is the head of the malleus so the handle of the malleus is embedded in the middle layer fibrous layer embedded in it okay and this is the attachment on to its uh, fibrous layer okay so this provides the attachment the fibrous layer to the handle of malleus and this handle of malleus is not extending in the lower half of the tympani but it is extending only into the upper half of the tympanic membrane okay upper half of the tympanic membrane now the handle of malleus as i said is embedded in the middle fibrous layer the point of the maximum convexity on the inner surface is at the tip of the handle of the malleus see this this is the tip uh, of the handle of the malleus here and this is the point of the maximum convexity inward and this point is called as umbo okay where it is the maximally convex from its inner aspect the tympanic membrane is maximally convex okay so this is the <coughs> features of the inner surface okay <coughs> let's go to the now the most of the tympanic membrane is tightly stretched and is therefore called as 
parts tensa okay now if we see this tympanic membrane in its whole extent here let us see this <coughs> this is the excuse me this is the tympanic membrane seen from the outer surface that means covered by the cuticle or skin here we will see that this is tightly stretched and is therefore called as the pars tensa this most of this tympanic membrane <coughs> this part is called as the pars tensa this is pars tensa that means this whole part except a small triangular part here which is not tense and this is called as the pars flaccida it is loose loose and thin so it is called as the pars flaccida on the internal surface the pars flaccida is crossed by a nerve see this hmm? on the inner this is the tympanic membrane as seen from inner aspect and this is tympanic membrane as seen from outer aspect and as i told you that the intermediate fibrous layer sends its fibers in two different direction one of the fibers are arranged circularly and other set of fibers they are arranged radially okay from the tip of the <coughs> handle of the malleus that is from the central part or the pa umbo part okay which is uh, the maximum convexity inside now this as if you will see this tympanic membrane from inside then you will see that there is a nerve present here and this nerve is called as the carda tympani carda tympani now and this comes from the posterior canaliculus then crosses the pars flaccida and then it crosses the the malleus bone here okay lateral to the malleus bone then it crosses this the malleolar fold here anterior malleolar fold and then it crosses uh, deep to that of the long process of the incus this is incus which forms an articulation with that of the head of the malleus the second ossicle and this is the long process of the incus and this carda tympani now goes deep to it that means this carda tympani while it is passing it is just close to that of the pars flaccida okay lateral to that sorry medial to that of the malleus and lateral to that of the long process of the incus okay and this is in relation to the uh, pars flaccida okay pars flaccida so this is cardia okay, uh, this carda tympani now okay carda tympani now is here now <coughs> on the internal surface of this pars flaccida as i said internal surface is the it is crossed by the carda tympani now which is an important relation of that of the pars flaccida and two ossicles that is the malleus and incus in between the two ossicles it is running the this membrane is held tense that means pars tensa okay the whole thing is held tense okay with the help of uh, the tensor tympani muscle that means the pull of the tensor tympani muscle which is inserted on to the handle of the malleus it keeps the okay uh, tympanic membrane as tense except that of the pars flaccida which is a small triangular area shown here in the blue color okay this pars flaccida the rest of the tympanic membrane is quite tense okay and that's why there is concavity uh, outside and convexity inward because the this uh, tendon of the tensor tympani muscle is attached to that of the handle of the malleus and pulling it medially that's why there is a convexity inside and concavity outside and that is also the reason for the tautness or tension tens, tension in the tympanic membrane okay it is held tense okay so this is about the tympanic membrane you know the location you know the two surface concave and convex the three different layers which are present cuticle fibrous and mucous membranous layer from its 
outer surface and from its inner surface and its relation with that of the carda tympani okay its relation with that of the carda let's come to the blood supply of this now i mean say of this membrane tympanic membrane now the blood supply you can also realize the extensive blood supply of the tympanic membrane again with this uh, theme dissector and this is the volume 3 and the author of the volume 3 and this is a good dissector which shows you lot of the diagrams from the atlas okay gilroy atlas here and this is you can see here the tympanic membrane here see this this is the handle of the malleus and this is the tensor tympani muscle attached to the handle or the process of the malleus this is the head of the malleus above that of the tympanic membrane which is articulating with that of the incus and this is the long process and this is the short process of that of the incus and this process will articulate with the stapes so so you can see that it is whole of the middle ear cavity here as it is the middle ear it is supplied by many branches as seen okay as seen there will be the branches on the external surface or the external acoustic meatus side also so let us come to see the blood supply the external surface of the deep auricular branch of the maxillary artery so the external surface that is which is covered by the skin is supplied by the deep auricular branch of the maxillary artery deep auricular branch uh, while the inner surface is supplied by the anterior tympanic branch of the maxillary artery anterior tympanic branch while it is also supplied the inner aspect is also supplied by the posterior tympanic branch of the posterior auricular artery the posterior auricular artery so the maxillary artery and posterior auricular artery they supply the inner surface of the tympanic membrane the venous drainage is also in two sides the outer surface drains to the external jugular vein while the inner surface of the tympanic membrane drains directly to the transverse sinus now supply the nerve supply the outer surface is supplied by the auriculo temporal nerve and which part of the external surface it is the antero inferior part of the outer surface is supplied by that of the auriculo temporal the remaining part may be supplied by the vagus nerve the inner surface of the tympanic branch is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve and this glossopharyngeal nerve the ninth cranial nerve it supplies it forms a tympanic plexus on promontory that is on medial wall of the middle ear cavity and from there the, it supplies the mucous membrane okay our inner surface of the tympanic branch that is covered by the mucous membrane so it is the auricular temporal nerve to the external surface and to the inner surface is supplied by that of the glossopharyngeal now okay glossopharyngeal now okay so as i said that the outer surface is by auricular temporal now as well as a small part by the vagus now and inner surface uh, is by the glossopharyngeal now okay so this is the nerve supply of the tympanic membrane now in the applied anatomy of the tympanic membrane when the light is failed of uh, light falls on to the outer surface of the tympanic membrane as the ent surgeon looks okay hmm. then there is a triangular area okay which is seen as a light cone on the antero inferior aspect of the tympanic membrane okay and with this light you can also see the handle of the malleus and the long process of the incus can be seen through the tympanic membrane as it is translucent and it is translucent now the other implied applied importance is that sometime when the otitis media or the pus starts collecting into the middle ear cavity then it bulges hmm, on to the posto inferior aspect of the tympanic membrane an incision in the posto inferior part of the membrane will drain this pus okay and at this side the bulge is the maximum that means the bulge of the pus is maximum and the posto inferior part of the membrane 
but a surgeon has to be careful not to give the incision in the above the hand i mean say middle part of the tympanic membrane because we have seen that the carda tympani now is lying just close to deep to the mem mucous membrane or mucosa uh, between the this fibrous layer and mucosa running on to the medial aspect of the handle of malleus and on to the lateral surface of the pars flaccida so it is very close okay and i am embedded i will say that it is embedded into the tympanic membrane and incision should be always in the inferior part of the tympanic membrane to drain the pus not go into the upper part otherwise the carda tympani now may cut okay so this incision also okay if it is in the posto inferior part will save the carda tympani now okay right this completes the short note on the tympanic now okay thank you very much for watching this video